Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and lead instructor for CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record live at 2 p.m. Eastern Time every Monday. If you enjoy this video, hit that like button. And if you want to submit to be on the show, take a look at the information in the description. Okay, so we're playing at Parks 2-5 No Limit. Okay. $1,000 cap. I have 1200 and the villain covers. So this was this was obviously played what a few months ago or something like that, right? This probably is... played, yeah, fall probably sometime. Okay, so this is the uh, Parks Two Five game, which is a one thousand cap, and you're twelve hundred effective, right? Right. Okay. And villain is you know twenty five to thirty year old. Uh, somebody told me is a pro, or certainly aggressive young guy. Okay. So he opens in middle position for twenty five. Okay. Um. And the cutoff calls, and I'm on the button with the ace of spades and the ten of spades. And I call. Um, so let me ask you a question here. So you're on the button with ace of spades, ten of spades, and you call. Is this a very large open um, yeah. in consideration for, like, how, how big is the open size usually? Yeah, so uh, it used to be. And still is at some depends on the table, but you know you get people opening fifteen to twenty. Um, these days, fifteen is pretty rare, so it's twenty or twenty-five. There's also a group of guys, and this is one of the guys who oftentimes plays at the bigger game, which I think is a ten-ten. Uh huh. And they want to turn the two-five into a ten-ten. Okay. So it's not unusual for them to have twenty-five, thirty even 35 as an opening. Okay. And you just have to, you know, adjust your game accordingly. Right. Right. So. right. I mean, here's the thing. So when he opens the 25 and the cutoff calls, the reason why I want it, so you're saying that this guy usually plays larger and he's just trying to make the game yeah. bigger, basically. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this, is, I, I would almost always three bet this hand here. You've got a dead cold yeah. ball. You've got a, you have a dead call, uh, dead money, right. In the form of the cutoff calling in between. So you're incentivized here to three bet. Some of the time here with that dead money, you've got a really good hand. I mean, where I might over flat is maybe some of the weaker suited aces, like ace six suited, ace deuce, ace three suited, small pocket pair, something like this. But I think I'm going to be three betting here quite a bit with an MP1 open to 25 and a cutoff call. I mean, I would probably make it like 100 here. And you're definitely yeah. deep enough here, too. I mean, it's not a huge, huge thing, but I think that you would find that a lot of, that, that would be the, the play pre flop. Yeah, I considered it. Uh, Ace ten, even suited, is kind of below my my three bet threshold. I like Ace Queen better. Obviously, Aces Kings Queens. Even I might do Jack before I do Ace ten. But I mean, I don't I don't know why you would object to three betting with suited Broadways. I mean, you're gonna have a lot of playability and. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I would definitely. Uh, I would. I, I would. I mean, I would just say that I would definitely three bet here for sure. Yeah, okay. So okay. Keep it in mind. Yep. Um. So it's eighty in the pot because the blinds fold. Uh huh. And then the flop is ten of clubs, okay. nine of spades, three of clubs. Ten of clubs flop. Is ten of clubs? What was it again? Nine of diamonds. Nine of spades. Nine, nine of spades. Nine of spades. All right. Ten of clubs. Nine of spades. What is it? Three of clubs. Three of clubs. All right. So two clubs out there. Ten of clubs. Nine of spades. Three of clubs, and you have ace. Ten of spades. Okay. Right. Yep. So the villain checks and the cutoff check. So the villain checks and the cutoff checks. Okay. Yeah. So check Someone check. Suspicious. Yeah, that he checks, but so the. Um, so then I bet 50 into 80. All right, so Hero bets 50. This seems pretty standard here. I mean, I wouldn't say that it's somewhat suspect that he checks. I mean, this isn't – he's not always going to – he's not always going to, um, you know, bet here with a hand like ace-king or something like that. So, I mean, I, I would definitely, definitely bet if I were you. Yeah, yeah, no no question about betting. So yep. I bet 50. Uh -huh. He calls – one calls, cut off full. Okay, so uh, MP1 calls and yeah. cutoff folds. Okay, so now the pot is 180, right? 180, right. Okay. So then the turn is what I call good card, bad card. 
It's the six of spades. Six um, of spades on the turn. Yeah. Why is so that a, have, why is that a good card, bad card? Well, good card because now I not only have top pair, top kicker, but I got the nut flush draw. Well, I I'd say that's a good card. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? okay. <laughs> All right, but I'm I'm a, you know, uh, uh, I'm a huge pessimist at the, at the, at the table. <laughs> so, I I have instantly thought of 7 8, right? With 7 8 is open ended. Give this guy seven eight of hearts, seven eight of diamonds. No question, he'd open that. No question, he'd check call. Right? Really? So, because let me, let me just get into logic here with you. Because you know, seven eight suited from MP one. Some people, a lot of people, will open that, right? Like as probably the bottom part of their opening range. But you know, if I open seven eight suited, and the flop comes out ten nine three, and the cutoff on the button call, I think I'm going to be doing a fair amount of c betting. I mean, what better flop? I and mean, we flop open ended. So I think yeah. that if you take, if if you put somebody in a spot with MP1 in this particular scenario where they open seven eight, they're gonna be. I think eight or nine times out of ten, people are gonna be c betting here. I mean, I, I I'm definitely not scared of, of of seven eight here. It's interesting to think about what he is check calling with because of positional awareness and the fact that, you know, if he checked a hand like ace king ace queen. He could check call against you heads up, but when there's a guy to his left, he really should be folding. So, you, you know, I, I think that a lot of times this is some sort of marginal type of hand where it could be like a hand like queen 10, jack 10, king 10. I guess maybe some over pairs if the guy is sort of like understands like board textures and things like that. But um, I still think you have a fair amount, the, the best hand here, a fair amount of the time for sure. Yeah. I mean, so I bet anyway, I probably, I would if it was the two of diamonds, I would have bet two, right? So, um, the, the, or something, you know, the six yeah. of spades, is, the six of spades is a good card, you know, in general, but, um, so I bet 125 into 180, which is about the same ratio as the, as the flop bet. So check and hero bets 125. That is a little bit on the larger side. And this is an interesting spot here because, you know, obviously it's better that you have the spade here, right? Because not only if the occasional time that you're actually behind, you can also improve. I'm just wondering if you would bet this size if it was like an offsuit deuce. It just seems a little bit large. And sometimes like when you make a large bet like this, it sort of decreases the chance that you are bluffing. But if you would make this bet with a hand like queen jack or front door clubs, then I'm okay with it. It's just something of note. It's a, you know, it's a little bit on the larger side. So you bet 125. Yeah. Okay. I actually thought of checking for pot control. Um, it might've been the better idea, but. Well, I think um, just to take away from this is that if you were going to have some tens that you were going to check behind, you actually want to bet the ones with the spade draw. Because of the fact, like I just said, that if if you get raised, you can call, and also you're building a pot up towards the nuts. But anyways, okay, so you bet 125. Yep, and so he calls, and so the pot is now 430. Okay. The river is definitely not a good card. It was a seven of clubs. Okay, so let's review here for the people who are listening to this on the podcast or who are going to listen to this on the podcast. 2 5 cap, 1,200 effective, MP1 to 25, cutoff calls, hero calls on the button with ace, 10 of spades. The board comes out 10 of clubs, 9 of spades, 3 of clubs, check, check, hero bets 50, MP1 calls, cutoff folds, pots 180, turns to 6 of spades, so hero has top pair in the nut flush draw now. MP1 checks, hero bets 125. Preflop Razor and MP1 calls. Pot's now 430. River's the seven of clubs. So it brings in a right. one-liner to an eight, and it brings in front door clubs. Yep. Yep, okay. So he leads out for 325, which is three-quarter pot. So MP1 bets 325 here. Wow, this is kind of... I mean, here's the thing. Um... It's it's really interesting here because again for the same reasons that I think that seven eight is going to bet off a fair amount of the time here as a c bet on the flop, I think that flush draws are going to be betting a fair amount here on the flop too, 
And, and, you know, when you look at the types of flush draws that a guy's going to open from, yeah, there might be some ace X, like ace little of clubs that maybe, maybe sometimes get, te- you know, taken for a check call. But the other Broadway club draws are combo draws, like king, queen of clubs, yeah. queen, jack of clubs, king, jack of clubs. And, and those hands get bet a lot here too. I don't know. It just seems odd that he has an eight here. Or he has a club draw. Um, you don't block any of the club draws when he makes this bet. This seems to me like he might have a hand like King Queen and he was trying to represent like the front door flush draw. If you're saying he's playing bigger and he wants to try to bluff you off a hand, I, I would have a hard time folding here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I mean, if you felt like you were behind to like, you know, King, King, Queen, Queen, Jack, Jack, why would those hands like come out and start betting here now? You know what I'm saying? No, no, that's no. Yeah, I didn't put him on that. Yeah. I mean, so <laughs> I tanked for a while because when I see a bet like this, and I'm an old guy, right? So he and he knows that. He played with me before. Uh huh. So, so when I see a bet like this, I'm pretty sure it's somebody knowing that it's the only way they can win the pot, right? Um, is by betting at it. And right. Betting that and betting in a way that you know, makes a, a call difficult. Sure, so, sure. And so I tanked to the extent that there's another guy at the table who I played with a lot. He said he'd never seen me tank that long before. Well, but, but before, you, before you tell me what happens, I just want to, again, I mean, one of, your, your, your logic is correct in, the, you know, what you're saying. But when I am in this particular spot, like in a spot like yours, in a, I always want to try to think about, okay, well, what can my opponent have here that's a bluff? Like, what makes sense here? That, like, yeah. if he's bluffing, what is he bluffing with? So what? that's what I would say. To you. I would say, like, what do you think he can have here as a bluff that calls the flop with a person left to act behind him and that continues to call the turn? Um, what Like, what kind of hands do you think he has? Yeah, so I thought about it and obviously didn't think long enough, but... Um... So I was thinking that, uh, as you said before, um, ace uh, X of clubs, ace three of clubs, ace five of clubs, one of those would might take this line. Well, those aren't bluffs, though, Either. right? No, that's not a bluff. So I'm trying right. to think, is there any club that he'd have? There are no clubs that he would have. Four or five of clubs. You know, think of all the clubs that that are, that are not bluffs. Mm-hmm. And is it possible that he's got the, you know, floated the flop and then uh, decided to uh, call with like uh, ace eight of hearts or something with an over to the board and well, back door? Again, those you know. again, those aren't bluffs, but it would be no. a hard well, time for me to think that he has ace eight here when he calls your yeah. bet on a ten nine three board with a person left right. act. So what are, what are his bluffs here? That's why I figured he had more value here than bluffs. Um, the I mean, in, in retrospect, there's an obvious bluff, but uh, what's that? Uh, sorry, what's the obvious bluff? Queen Jack. Okay, well, I so what I was trying to get at here is is that if he had a hand like King Queen or Queen Jack, although I think that those hands are bet some of the time here too. Queen Jack being two over cards, right, in an open ended straight draw. Mm-hmm. Queen Jack. King Queen. Now King Queen that doesn't have really like a flush draw on the turn isn't really supposed to call. Like he'd have to call with one of the stiff suits and he was gonna represent it. Um yeah, and then maybe like Ace Jack suited with a back door, but then he doesn't pick up the back door because you have ace ten of spades when the back door comes in. But I would still still have a hard time folding here. I mean, you, he bet three twenty five and a four thirty, so the pot's seven fifty five, and it's three twenty five right. for you to call. So you really only need to be good here, you know, like thirty percent of the time, right? Right. So what did you end up doing? Fold. You folded. Okay. Yeah. And did you find that? Yeah. No, he showed in his arrogant young guy manner. You know, uh, Queen of Hearts, Jack of Hearts. Yeah. Yeah, it's just here's the thing. What's your name, by the way? John. 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 Yeah, here's the thing, John. Um whenever somebody makes a bet 
on the river that's polarized. And of course, that's going to mean that it's going to represent like near top value or a bluff. You have to look at not only their bluffs, but also to like their top value range. And the top value range here, like what he's really representing here is a flush. An eight doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We know he's not going to check call, check call with over pairs and then bet like the front door, right? When it comes in with a one liner out here to an eight. So when you look at that polarized range and you look at the value range of his polarization being a flush, I go back to the flop and I ask myself, isn't he betting off most of the flush draws on the flop though? For the same reasons that I talked about. That's why I thought that his, when I said in the beginning, I thought that his check was suspicious. And I even thought of it at the time. That it was suspicious. I just didn't, I guess I focused too much on a flush draw. Right. Which but is the logical, Which is the logical hand to call. Is it the logical hand not to bet? Yeah, I just think that like a lot of times, especially against the guy that's trying to kick the game up, if they're going to raise, you know, a flush draw or a pre-flop, if he has two clubs in his hand, he's going to be betting this flop a lot. So if we can boil down his range on the river to a flush or bluffs, and we can take some of those flushes out because he didn't bet the flop, I would really have a hard time. I'd really have a hard time, you know, um, folding. I'd have a hard time folding here, but I appreciate it. Thank you very much for the call. If you like what you've seen here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this call in hand, hit the like button down below. To check out CrushLivePoker.com, click on the link in the description. Use the code YTA300 to get the first 30 days for free.